So welcome to the eighth lesson on rotation and what we're going to do today is Newton's second law for rotation. So we know that the force acting on a body having translation motion is very nicely described by the equation F net is equal to the product of mass into the acceleration induced in that body. Now the good part is that we can use this equation, this analogy, to write a similar equation for bodies undergoing rotation. The only difference is that torque net substitutes force net and moment of inertia about the axis of rotation is I which substitutes M and the angular acceleration substitutes A. So let's go ahead and validate this equation or let's derive this equation. So consider a body of mass M rotating about an axis and the distance of the body from the rotation of axis is R and it has a force F acting on it. So for such a body we can say that force Ft which is a tangential force is equal to the product of mass and the tangential acceleration. Now we know that torque is equal to R into Ft. So if we substitute the value of Ft over here what we get is torque is equal to R into M A times T. But we also know that A T or the tangential acceleration is equal to R times angular acceleration. And if we substitute for A T what we get is torque is equal to R times M times R times alpha or torque is equal to we can say m r square alpha and we know that m r square is nothing but the moment of inertia and therefore torque is equal to i alpha and that's what we wanted to prove. Now the derivation of this equation was pretty simple but what's important is what's its significance in physics or more importantly what's its significance in the real world. So there's a beautiful example from Resnick Halliday and I'm going to take exactly that to explain you how relevant this equation is. So what we have in this problem from Resnick Halliday is that there are two judo fighters. This is the opponent and this is you let's say. So the problem says to throw an 80 kilogram opponent that is this with a basic judo hip throw you intend to pull his uniform with a force F and a moment of arm d1 is equal to 0.3 meters from the pivot point or the rotation axis on your right hip. You wish to rotate him above the pivot point with an angular acceleration minus 6 radians per second square that is with an angular acceleration that is clockwise in the figure. Assume that is rotational inertia i relative to the point is 15 kilogram meter square. So what must be the magnitude of force F B if before you throw him you bend your opponent forward to bring his center of mass to your hip. Now the problem might have sounded complicated but I think uh, you'll understand as we go about solving this problem. So from the physics we've understood so far around rotation we can say that the force F here induces an angular acceleration using Newton's second law for rotations that says that torque net is equal to I alpha. So when the feet of the opponent are off the floor, you can see there are three forces acting on him. One is a force F by U on him that is tugging at his sleeve to the normal force from U on him at the pivot point and three is the force of gravity of the opponent or his mg. So we need to find three different torques on account of three different forces to solve this problem. The torque due to your pull would be minus df since you are causing the clockwise motion of the opponent and that's why we've taken it as negative which is equal to we know i alpha or we can say that f or rather this is f1 f1 or the force with which you are trying to pull him down is equal to minus I alpha upon D1. And if we substitute the values, what you'll get is F1 is equal to minus 
15 multiplied by alpha which is minus 6 divided by 0 0.3 and what you'll find is f1 is equal to 300 newton so you need to pull down your opponent with a force of 300 newton so that he falls flat on the ground now let us say you had another situation which is something like this let us say so here the question is what will be the force f1 required to rotate the opponent if the opponent decides to stay straight and the moment of arm becomes d2 equal to 0 0.12 meters so now if the moment of arm d2 is no more zero but has a value we have another torque due to force f2 or the opponent's weight and this would then be equal to d2 into f2 or d2 mg and this is positive since it causes anti-clockwise motion so then the net torque would be written as t net now is therefore equal to minus d1 f1 plus d2 into mg where m is the mass of the opponent and this now should equal to i into alpha what we'll get is f1 is equal to minus i alpha upon d1 plus d2 mg upon d1 and if we go ahead and substitute the values what you'll find is f1 is equal to 300 newtons which we've already calculated for this expression plus 0 0.12 which is the moment of arm for force mg into 80 which is the mass of the opponent into 9.8 which is the gravity divided by 0 0.3 and what you'll find is f1 equals about 610 newtons so it goes on to show that you have to put more force and therefore more energy if you do not bring the center of the mass of the opponent to the axis of rotation in order to cancel the opposing torque offered by it. So this is the reason you see experienced fighters move swiftly to pull down the opponent. In essence, they are not giving the opportunity to the opponent to adjust their center of mass to their advantage.